Hello, people of the internet, my name is Johnny, and welcome back to another Game Theory Reaction video. That's right, boys, Austin is back once again with the science of Five Nights at Freddy's. I had no clue that he was even going to be putting out this new video. I have no clue what he's tackling in this episode, so I guess the only way to find out is if we watch the video. Quickly, before we get into it, though, again, I was not expecting this video to come out. Um, and while I was still originally planning on uploading another video today, um, that is gonna have to wait till tomorrow, unfortunately. And that video, as I mentioned in a previous video, is going to be about the security breach leaks that we got yesterday, which are false, don't worry about it. So we will be covering those leaks tomorrow, so if you don't want to miss them, I think you should subscribe. I really think you should. By the way, I am in the new place, you can't see it just yet, behind the green screen is a completely different area. I'm very excited, finally got the office all set up, this is my first episode recording in the brand new office, I'm very excited. But anyways, let's not waste any more time, let's hop right into the science of Five Nights at Freddy's. I think that, is, I think that this video has something to do with like, psychic powers? I don't know, let's hop into it. Let's all smash the like at the same time. Three, two, one, go, go, go. Three, two, oh, one, a play. The FNAF animatronics are psychic. Here we go. Dear Scott Cawthon. Scott Cawthon. Hi, it's me. Hey, Austin. Austin. I read your book. This one. Did he really read the book? That you hid some science in it, you little nerd. And so I Austin read actually read Boy, Fetch. Howdy, do I have opinions? Turn it up a little bit. Okay, so where to start? Did you guys watch Matt's vid? The I did. Reaction to it. Link in the description. Electronics. Uh, no. Okay. Uh, okay, so you know how in Five Nights at Freddy's there's these evil animatronics trying to kill you? Well, mm -hmm. they're uh, filled with ghosts? Filled with robot ghosts? Is, yeah. that, is that right? Is it robot ghosts? I mean, ah, anything comes out of left so, field. Uh, the, um... Let's just start at the beginning. Anything and everything. You feel me? Okay, so the story we are going to be looking at primarily is the first story in the second... It's all the way on the other side of the desk. Fetch. A story it's not close to me at all. Get this. An evil animatronic. I know. A huge deviation wow. from the formula. Anyway, these stories set up the rules of the FNAF universe as well as give quite a bit of lore and backstory for the games. <laughs> and sometimes the lore. it's obvious and at other times it's a little bit more subtle. In this story, in particular, right. we get a lot of insight into the weirdly specific pseudoscience rules that make up the way the Five Nights at Freddy's world works, and I think gives a tremendous amount of lore fodder to explain how exactly it is that creepy ghosts or um Agni powered it's, it's weird, Austin. Or whatever, you got actually this, man. Control and manipulate animatronics to do their bidding. So, okay, in this particular story, Fetch, we follow the internal model monologue of an uber nerd named Greg as he struggles Greg. to navigate the social mores of high school and through the course of the story several real world scientific studies and theories get dropped as being worth keeping in mind. Zero point energy, random number, or rather random event generation as it pertains to the global consciousness project, and the experiments oh of Cleve Baxter. This is gonna get CIA complicated real fast, isn't it, Austin? ...who used polygraph machines to read reactions from plants in the 60s. And since the plot of the story takes off pretty much right away, we're gonna have to sidestep for a minute to discuss a few of these concepts before moving on, because these three concepts form a triangle of support for the one another. triangle of science! universe that frames the <laughs> metaphysical rules of the world and is that the security breach logo is that the new teaser <laughs> fit together to make it so that they should have done that that would have been hilarious in the first place <laughs> the first corner of the triangle is honestly the least important and that's the experiments of clive baxter Baxter's hey, clive. experiments in the Cleave. 60s supposedly were able to register some sort of response from plants using polygraph machines specifically pain empathy and some sort of extrasensory perception Nobody has ever been able to successfully <laughs> replicate his studies ever since, and they're commonly thought to be bunk. However, in Fetch, these studies seem to be a bit more legitimate. The fact that plants Ooh. are able to pick up on extrasensory information is less important than the fact that extrasensory perception is a real, measurable thing in the FNAF universe, even though it isn't in our universe, which brings us to the second point in the triangle. Zero point fields. Like Zero point fields sound very complicated, but they're actually really, really simple-ish. In quantum mechanics, simple -ish. Uh, known as thanks. a quantum vector. 
vacuum state, which is the I feel so uh, we are showing now. Space can exist in. Imagine a box that is a perfect vacuum. It has literally, quite literally, no particles, no photons, no electrons, no nothing. Right. This is a quantum vacuum state. There's no heat because heat is energy stored in particles, and since there's no particles, this space is effectively entirely devoid of energy in every conceivable way. Hence, zero point field. Makes it's sense. Point at which there is zero energy in the field. The field in this case. It's so simple. Space Ish. itself. But what if I told you that this wasn't the whole story? Oh, that of in course it wouldn't fields be. Where there is absolutely nothing, something can be created. These somethings are called virtual. Virtual. These somethings are. <laughs> These somethings are called. <laughs> It's hard to say. These Dude, I struggle with the same thing, Austin. Particles. You're not alone, man. These things are called virtual particles. Holy, <laughs> these things are called virtual particles, and are particles that quite literally are created from nothing. Thought that was impossible? Well, it actually isn't. Our universe oh, well, is a closed cool. system, meaning that no new energy can be put into it, and no energy can be deleted from it. And virtual particles are no exception to this, but they do kind of cheat the system. When a virtual particle, okay. a proton or a photon or whatever is created out of thin air or rather thin nothing an antiparticle <laughs> of the exact same energy level and composition except the exact opposite is created as well in a million times out of a million and one these particles recombine and zero each other out snapping out of existence immediately if they don't okay. combine immediately it's no big deal the antiparticle will move on and collide with something else and remove the required amount of energy from it this is actually the phenomenon that creates Hawking radiation that shrinks black holes. Mass isn't actually escaping black holes. What's happening is that particles are snapping into existence near the black hole, and sometimes, sometimes, those antiparticles get sucked in past the Schwarzschild no. and remove energy from the black hole, effectively shrinking it. So, what does all this have to all do right. with Five Nights at Freddy's? That's what I'm thinking, well, Austin. A lot, actually, Educate these me, zero man. Zero-point fields, or rather these zero-point energies, are treated as the medium through which which psychic energy travels and may itself actually be somehow sentient. Whether it's just a transmission medium or whether it actually has a will of its own is something that we'll have to wait for further books if they touch on it <laughs> at all. But in the FNAF world, well, okay, think of zero point fields as a Newton's cradle, where a I have one of those. Tension goes it's in the other room. end, smacks into the field, travels and shoots out the other end, which in turn lifts up if we're falling down, hitting the field and sending something back. Except this yep. transmission is three dimensional. Not just Ooh. one dimensional like the crater. It is infinitely more complicated and beyond our understanding. And trying to figure out the best way to make the cradle do what you want is, oh, I don't know, like a monkey trying to figure out how to fly an airplane. You're probably going to end up hurting yourself before you figure it out. As for the third point in the triangle, well, we'll get to that later because I still now, don't quite know what's going on, but to know in okay. Order to continue building our premise. So, Greg, our protagonist, Greg, is Greg. Nerd who knows oh, this is a FNAF video. I, I in forgot. His experiments with trying to uh, read instructions from the zero no, point. Change that to Johnny Walks. Lead him and his pals to check out. Hey, wouldn't you have guessed it? A derelict children's pizzeria. This is where who the story thunk? actually starts in the book. Greg is already in an abandoned Freddy Fazbear's pizzeria. They don't look too happy. Looking around for stuff, and stuff they find because these books aren't a joyful slice of life anime about making soup or whatever and what they find okay. is fetch an animatronic wow but not quite like the ones we're used to seeing in the franchise up until now for one he's smaller a, a lot smaller he's a prize Ooh, actually one of the super awesome prizes you get for spending a million dollars in the store basically uh, fetch those things are always furby, so expensive but fnaf branded aka barely more terrifying than an actual furby this supposed nothing we've seen before eh? drawing greg to plus trap friends into the I mean, pretty bad I mean, they're small too, the but like, itself. Okay. Greg turned his attention to fetch. He wanted to see if he could get the dog thing to do whatever it was supposed thing. to do. He had a hunch this might be what he'd felt in the field, what had called him here. 
Fetch's documentation, in spite of being super old, states that he was supposedly built with the capability to sync with your phone and retrieve information wow. and things for you, like a creepy, real-world version of Siri. You love to see it. Anyway, in his fiddling, Greg... They can alert me when my special delivery is here. Leave the pizzeria, Ding dong. Texting Greg, retrieving things for him, saying creepy stuff, and over time, getting things for Greg without Greg actually directly asking, taking his request too literally, leaving severed fingers on his doorstep and killing his girlfriends. You know, hmm. all the stuff fun, Alexa fun. secretly wants to do for you, but can't because she doesn't have legs or creepy, spiky teeth. Which brings gonna us at last to the unplug this right now. Triangle of FNAF metaphysics, Get the freak out of my life. Event generators and the global consciousness project. Because this is the key that holds everything together. How is Fetch able to sync up with a phone that runs on an operating system over half a decade more modern Good than what was created? It's this. This triangle, this trifecta of ingredients of science the and and pseudoscience that all mix together into a soup of weirdness and terror culminating in one simple horrific ability the okay. ability to manipulate not just computer code but the very world around you just with the power of your mind my mind. Random event generators, uh. or REGs, are a big subject in fact. I see how come up again and again and again and again, and they're a key tool in the study of global consciousness, a field okay. of parapsychology which is, uh... It's not real. Sorry, it's just, it's it's not. There's no support for any of these fields at all, and all supposedly interesting findings have all failed to be replicated by independent review. It's very, very important to me that you understand, going forward, that this, out of everything I've said he today, does not exist. is the most not real <laughs> thing in the books, in spite of having a real history. And every okay. study I read on them gave me an ulcer, and some of them even had typos in them. But the general Fun. principle is this. Under this field of study, the existence of some sort of Extra uh, sensory network human that consciousness so scary. is Don't taken as a given me. and they attempt to measure it, you know, like good scientists. The method they use is like good little number scientists. generators, good machines scientists. that are designed to output, you know, what it says on the tin. Uh, random, numbers. random numbers. In this okay. case, they output ones Makes and zeros sense. specifically. The people who study this field then try to find anomalies in the number generation, something that's outside the norm, an above average number of zeros or ones in a specific area, and then find a correlation within the real world. Hey, it's hurting your brain yet? Yeah, me too. Me too. Now, REGs produce ones and zeros only, but produces them at random. You're with me so far, right? And this I guess. Science tries to discover ways <laughs> I feel like I missed something because I still don't know what's going on. Means either through the power of thought or by bringing the machines brain, themselves Austin. into areas where they expect may have some sort of paranormal thingy going on. You know, haunted places, graveyards, paranormal pizzas, thingies, what have you. Now, there are two types of REGs. One that sucks and one that is awesome. And now let's go over what those are, starting with the okay. sucky version in order to show you why the awesome one is so awesome. Okay, yeah. Uh, uh, first, how about a magic trick? Want to see something cool? I love magic. Psychic predictive powers. Okay, so I'm gonna okay. I'm going to a random number generator code and tell you exactly what numbers it'll spit out. Okay, like 60, yeah. 51, 84, 63, 40, 91, 4, 23, and uh, 20. Did I get it? Heck yes, I did. You what know the why? heck? Because this thing spits out the same random numbers every time. Look. <laughs> I'm running it again, and again, and again, and again. Why is it the same every time? Because random number generation, while random-ish, is also predetermined. There's that ish again. The same basic principle. They have a seed, a P1, and a P2. You take the seed, right. multiply it by P1, add on P2, mod 100, don't worry about that, spit out the number, take the number as the new seed, and repeat the formula again. My RNG code okay. uses a seed 3, a P1 of 263, and a P2 of 71. This is why you'll sometimes hear RNGs called pseudo-random because they aren't actually really random. They are determined. They're just cool. really, really hard to predict. That is, unless you know the seed and the formula. Even very complicated and secure random number encryption services use this basic model, although with tweaks here and there. They usually use bigger numbers and use smart ways to get use them seeds. Big boys. are themselves pretty random, like the exact amps being used by your CPU you at a given moment multiplied by the system time or something. This is what's known as using okay. machine entropy, and while it's 
pretty random. It's still, you know, boring. You know boring. what's less boring? Quantum For now. randomness using zero point energy fields. I was and close. This is how the really good, fun REGs work. They yeah. are random number generators generated not by the, frankly, predictable methods of a computer algorithm. Rather, they pull random numbers literally out of thin air by measuring the actually random but consistent fluctuations in zero point energy fields themselves. And yeah. Greg and his crush Kimberly are to spend time with his REG to you? influence the machine through sheer will to output the numbers that they want. Greg isn't able to, that's called foreshadowing, but Kimberly actually registers significant deviations from the norm, and it's here where you've probably started to see how all these things tie together. Zero sure. point energy fields in the FNAF world are the weave through which thoughts and intentions flow, measurable by the Baxter methods and controllable by those who know how to use them. That said, as we learned with computer generated RNGs, something being determined and controllable doesn't necessarily mean you know how to control it yourself. Do you know what number, for instance, comes after 20, 20 in my RNG code? Do you? It's 31. Uh, and uh. maybe if you had enough time knowing my formula, you could actually figure that out for yourself. But what Probably. If I you to tell me what seed you needed to input in order to get me a 90 Wasn't it like three or something? Oh, number. Would you be know. able to do that? These are the four. Sure. I mean, play. give me enough time. If something like this were even real, if outside metaphysical forces were able to impact the world itself, it'd be very hard to pull off correctly. The seed number, by the way, would be five. I was close. In the FNAF world, this is shown to be possible. The ability okay. to manipulate this field and pull information from it is real because Kimberly can do Hi, it. But we Kimberly. also know that Greg sucks at it. But you know Greg, who you I suck. don't think sucks at it? Fetch. Fetch. I think Fetch Gold is an Let's go. master at event manipulation. Knows just what energy to put into the quantum vacuum to send just the ripples he needs through the Newton's cradle right into his perfect subject, Greg. He gets right Greg into my to little paw. He gets oh. Greg to activate him and free him. And once he's free, how is he able to tap into Greg's phone and hear all of his conversations and maybe even read his thoughts? It's definitely not Bluetooth. It's not. You want to read my head? Fetch is able to send ripples through the very nothingness surrounding all of us and influence technology on a fundamental level beyond machine code down to the binary. Remember, REG spit out only ones and zeros, so someone capable of manipulating that sort of thing. Messed up from that. that phones run on someone uh, who is phone guy a machine would be more than phone guys the, the villain all along and overriding systems almost entirely undetected what's more is that while I'm not 100% certain I'm pretty sure somehow other creatures in the FNAF universe are going to be capable or are already Ooh. capable of using these sorts of powers Ooh. themselves any predictions if mostly nobody stitch does, wraith. I guarantee you that the stitch wraith at the very least is gonna find some way to use these powers. Thankfully, this sort of thing isn't real. You can't manipulate quantum fields through the power of your thoughts alone. And you hmm. know how I know that? Well, aside from did reading try? up on it, I built one myself. Oh my no, god. Really? I did. Through the power of the quantum random module in Python, it was actually really, really easy. Quantum random connects to the what? ANU quantum random numbers server in Australia, a server that measures actual fluctuations in zero point fields for realsies and gives them to the public for free in real time. It's oh. pretty freaking cool. Since it was so easy, it took me literally only 10 minutes and 16 lines of code to make a random event generator that would spit out only a one or a zero randomly based on the quantum fluctuations of the universe itself. My very own pretty easy. quantum powered coin flipper. And for my baseline test, after 1000 flips, it did pretty good. 499 ones and 501 zeros. Hey. Totally normal split for a thousand iterations. And then, hell, just as for funsies, I ran the exact same experiment that Greg and Kimberly did in the book. I will disprove this global consciousness theory once and for all. I decided to make my machine using only the powers of my mind spit oh out more ones and zeros. And for 15 minutes, I sat there as it pinged a server on the other side of the world telling it one, 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 one. one. 
one. <laughs> this will show him. And after nearly getting there we go. tears, I can finally tell you that I got 524 ones. Much over half a standard deviation past one. That's over. Deviation. That's, hmm. Let me do it again. 530 ones. Wait, do I have magic powers? Wait, does this mean that evil psychic animatronic it's over. actually exists? Stay away from that Chuck E. Cheese graveyard, oh, kids. God. You do not know what might happen. Sincerely, Austin. P.S. Those oh. numbers, while true, aren't statistically significant. Calm down. Magic isn't real. I just thought it was pretty funny. Want to give a huge shout out to totally my real. level patrons, Jared Beecher, Draven Sam. Let's go, boys. Let's go. Royal Gaming 16, Ada Dam TP, Dan Rob, Nicholas Spillane. Let's go. Resnick, Siggy, nice Lewis. job. Thank you very much. Subscribe to the Game Theorist, and I will see subscribe you to me too. Time. I'm a cool guy. All right. Um. Okay. So I haven't read Fetch. I know I keep saying that I need to read the books, and I really do need to read the books, but I just don't have time to read the books. <laughs> so I ha I still have not read Fetch. I'm sorry. So that's probably why I didn't really understand what's going on here. But it was definitely interesting, the fact that, you know, magic and psychic s stuff can happen in FNAF. That's really interesting. Um, Wayo Scott will go with that if he goes anywhere with it will also be very interesting i guess the game theorist channel is going to be really packed full of uh fnaf videos uh recently because not only did we just get this video with the science of fnaf but we also just got a uh, step closer like a week or two ago i think and so i'm sure matt is going to pump out a video on that book sometime very soon whenever that is so expect probably at least one more FNAF Game Theory reaction video very soon. And also, with the introduction of Food Theory, um, maybe they're gonna do some sort of exotic butters, FNAF pizza type of thing. I did hear on one of Matt's uh, GT Live non-live videos that apparently there is a Chuck E. Cheese video for Food Theory in the work, so... I might check that one out. I haven't really decided yet. But anyways, that is it for this reaction video. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all on the flip side. Goodbye.